Okay, so my wife Tilly and I just got back from a two week cross country road trip. See, Tilly is an amazing photographer and she got an opportunity to go out and shoot a gravel bike race called Unbound. If you're not into bikes, you're not into cycling, let me explain what this is because it's genuinely one of the coolest things I've ever seen or ever experienced. In central Kansas, there's a small town called Emporia. And in Emporia, there is this massive bike race. It happens every single year. It's called Unbound, and it takes place on the gravel farm roads across Kansas. Now, there's actually a series of three different races that take place all at the same time. There's a 100 mile, a 200 mile, and then the XL, which is 350 miles. And this event has grown over the years and become the biggest gravel race in the world. It was started by a couple, Tim and Christy Moan, who used to own the music store in Emporia, Kansas, and started a bike shop years and years ago, and started this event as a super grassroots thing. In fact, I think the first year it was something like 34 riders that started the race. But this year, there was over 4,000 riders in attendance and racing. And it's not just amateur riders that are out there trying to push themselves. This event attracts some of the best cyclists in the world. Pros, Tour de France riders. I mean, it, it's a huge event. Now, my job was basically to assist my wife, Tilly, and she was there with a the mission of shooting the race, primarily covering the lead group, the pro group, the, the winners of the, the main event, which was the 200 mile. So my job was driver, navigator, and videographer. But then being there in person and seeing what these people were doing, not just the 200 mile racers, but specifically the XL riders. Something like 300 people competed in the XL, which is 350 miles. The winners, the men's and women's winners crossed the line in something like 24 hours. Uh, but most people came in way after that. I mean, these people were riding their bikes for over a day, over 28, 30 hours, 40 hours in some cases. It really struck a chord with me and it made me want to take a step into something I've wanted to do for a long time, which is try my hand at scoring stuff. I love writing music, I love producing music. I do it a lot for this channel, for these videos. So that's what I'm gonna try and do in today's video. I've got a ton of footage from this race. I'm gonna parse through it, try and capture and distill the feeling of what it was like to be there into sound and we'll see how it goes.
So that footage was primarily from the XL race. All of those riders that you saw were people that were riding the full 350 miles. And what's interesting is during the uh, the press meeting before the race weekend started, the race organizers told the photographers that you were not to interact with or encourage the XL riders at all. The XL is supposed to be its own sort of beast and it's supposed to be completely self-supported. So no outside help. And they're so adamant about that, that even people on the course are not supposed to interact with or talk to the riders at all. And when I've seen interviews or talked to people that have ridden the XL, they all kind of say different versions of the same thing, which is over the course of that 350 miles, you experience the highest highs and the lowest lows that at some point or several points during that race, you go to a dark, dark place in your mind. And so that was sort of the direction I wanted to go with this. I wanted something dark and ominous and slow and trudging. So I'll just quickly show you what I did here. The first thing we started with is this really dark, kind of ominous pad thing. And this is a contact uh, preset from a pack called Straylight, which is just full of these really cinematic, dark, ominous pads. And I started with this because it kind of had the feeling I wanted, that like really scary, heavy, dark thunderclouds in the background sort of vibe. And then on top of that, I took my Mother 32, and I created this like generative patch. So I basically just plugged in a D minor pentatonic scale into the sequencer and had it play random notes. And I fed that into the microcosm from hologram with the mix all the way up. So most of what you're hearing is the microcosm playing back and resampling with the reverb on. And then I knew I wanted some kind of rhythmic elements. So I took these two drum loops that I found on Splice. They're from the same pack, but instead of, you know, putting one eight bar section after another eight bar section in series. I just stacked the two and hard panned them left and right. When you would watch these riders out there as they got farther and farther into the race, they weren't riding at full steam. A lot of them just kind of had their heads down and they were just sort of spinning at this relatively slow cadence, just kind of grinding away all day. And that's what this feels like to me. And then I wanted some kind of guitar element. And since it's the Midwest and the landscape was like the rolling Flint Hills of central Kansas. It kind of had this almost Western sort of vibe and I wanted to get kind of a spaghetti Western guitar sound going. So, so I just took my Strat and I went direct in and used the uh, Tone King plugin from Neural DSP. And that's all the tremolo and all the reverb from the plugin. And then for a little added weight, I put in a synth bass. And that's basically it. There's like three or four elements there. You've got the drums, you've got the bass, you've got the pad, and you've got the guitar. I feel like that conveys what I wanted to capture out of this. This scary, big, ominous, slow, trudging, dark thing with a little bit of like optimistic, sparkly stuff, you know? It's like that that Mother 32 patch is kind of like the light at the end of the tunnel. Like eventually you're gonna get to the end of this thing, but it's kind of a long way off. It's a long way in the distance. Uh, I don't know. I want you all to know we are not routing around the mud between mile 11 and 14. It's probably gonna be a little bit of walking. It's not a complete, complete mess. It's gonna be a little sticky. Yeah. It's a gravel race. This ain't road racing, fellas. Three, two,
So this second track was actually kind of a challenge for me because I wanted something that felt more upbeat and interesting because the second race on the second day was more upbeat and interesting. We were following the lead pro men's group all day and they were absolutely flying. I mean, they rode 200 miles in just above 10 hours. In fact, they, they finished at like 10 hours and four minutes. So they're averaging 20, 21 miles an hour, which doesn't sound like a lot, but think about riding a bike 20 miles an hour over 200 miles of gravel and climbs and creek crossings and mud it's it's wild so i wanted the track to kind of reflect that and and have that sort of upbeat driving feel but the trouble i was running into was everything i was riding sounded like a ford truck commercial uh and i'm not trying to write a ford truck commercial unless ford you're watching i do need new trucks so uh call me. So the whole thing is starting with this groove. This is another splice loop I found. I use splice loops a lot because I absolutely hate programming drums and I suck at programming drums. I would much rather just track a real drummer, but I didn't have time to bring someone in this weekend. So uh, this is a really cool loop that I found. And you can hear the synth coming in underneath that. Uh, and then on top of that, we put down this, uh, this bass line here, which is basically my P bass running into my high watt guitar amp and then taking that direct in. So, and then I'm doubling that with a stereo guitar. And it's not perfectly lined up, but that's okay. I want a little variation. So that's basically it. That's the foundation of the track. And then I added a fuzz guitar in there as well, which is basically just a fuzz going into the high watt, going DI. So, so no, uh, no speaker emulation. I'm using the aux from Universal Audio, but I've turned off the cab modeling and the mic modeling, so it's just DI. In fact, I have it pulled up here. So this is what I'm using. So there's uh, no mic emulation or cabinet or speaker emulation. It's basically just taking the speaker out of the amplifier and going into my preamp. And I absolutely crushed the preamp going in, like really pushed it uh, way into overdrive. So the fuzz on top of the amp being overdriven, going into the overdriven preamp gave me this. And I added some uh, tape slap back to it as well. Then we got the sparkle guitar thing. This is the uh, Mood Mark II. Uh, using the pitch shift delay setting with some reverb uh, after it. And then we go to this big B section. Where we added some claps, add some shaker. And then my good friend Philip Conrad added these really cool uh, Moog parts. So he did a uh, this like riser thing on the sub 37 um, just kind of like noise LFO thing that builds and then he also put some synth bass down as well um, on my new keyboard I just bought a Roland JX3P and then Chris my production assistant put down some really nice chords on the JX3P which is what you're hearing that nice pad underneath and so everything comes together to build this big bridge And so that's the second track. You know, I think there was a lot of different directions I could have gone, but I'm happy with how this turned out. I think it's cool and it kind of fits the vibe of that second day of racing. Overall, though, this has been a pretty interesting experience. Like I said, I love writing music and producing music, but I've never done it with this uh, sort of angle where I'm trying to create something that fits a specific feeling and a specific visual element. And I have a newfound respect 
for film scorers and people that write music for sync in television and video games. This is kind of my version. I'm, I'm actually ripping off my friend Philip Conrad and his tiny song concept and then Emily Hopkins and how she scores a lot of video game stuff in her videos. I love how that stuff is done. Thank you for watching. I know this is a big departure from what I typically do here on the channel, but this is part of me sort of branching out and trying new things, not just for YouTube, but in my own sort of personal creative life. And part of the reason I started making these YouTube videos to begin with five years ago was to kind of document my journey and how I'm learning and trying to grow and, and develop new skills as a musician. And this is a big part of that. So if you enjoyed the video, if you stuck around to the end, thank you very much. I really genuinely appreciate you sticking around with this type of video. Uh, leave a comment, leave a like, it helps the video out. If you want information on some of the gear that I used in this video, uh, I'll have links, some Sweetwater affiliate links in the description box. If you enjoy my channel, that's a great way to support what I do over here. Uh, and also subscribe. If you're new here uh, or you've been watching for a while, it really does help me out if you click that subscribe button and I genuinely appreciate it. So thanks for watching. My name is Rhett Scholl, and I will catch you on the next one.